If you are on, if you're on YouTube or Periscope, send me a message. Let me know that you can see this. It's working fine. Because when I know that these things, when I know they're working better, that allows me to do a better show. Because then I'm not worried about it and I'm not freaking out. But when these things are broken and it's skipping and you guys start telling me, hey, I can't hear you on YouTube, then I can't. Then it breaks my concentration, and then I can't give a good show to those of Instagram. So, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Periscope, shoot me a message. Let me... Ah, see? There we go. It sounds not working over there. Well, guys, you're going to have to go to Instagram, because that's where the action is going to be this morning. Jaren, hello. How you doing? Uh, yeah, guys, so I'm going to try to... I'm going to try, if sound's not working over there, let me turn this off. And let's try to go live again. Love the podcast, been a real help. Uh, right on, Black Lab Furniture Revival. Thank you very much. I'm going to try to go live again. Hopefully this will work better. Because um, I want to have a documented thing with all, I want to have a, a, all these documented and so they stream to YouTube. Um, all right, so I started that again, guys. So if you're in Periscope, if you're in YouTube, let me know it's working all right. Wow, look at everybody coming into this. This is great. Um, so I restarted that for you guys over on those other channels. Let's make sure it works. Your favorite blockhead, I have not forgotten. I will see AJ in just a bit today. Shoot me a message on Instagram, please. I will take care of that. Um, whew, I don't even know where... To start today, I see that's what I'm talking about. When you guys send me hearts, that gets me excited. Do you recommend recommend any books? Yes, I always have books. We'll get to that. <sighs> All right. So, where do I want to get started today? I wanted to talk about the new normal. And um, and I think the reasons why a lot of us have been a little bit frustrated with all of this is, well, you know what? Let me, let me speak from my perspective and then you guys can let me know how you felt about it. I think there was a small part of me that was expecting things to go back to the way they were. And, and I, I logically looking at the evidence, looking at what was going on, looking at what seemed to be the overwhelming facts of the situation that we're in. I guess I knew that on an adult level, but I think, <laughs> I think the child in me, I think the, the wishful thinker, right? Uh, the positive person in me still thought that there was a chance that we would be going back to normal. And I think a lot of us were hopeful of that. And hey, maybe there is still a, that slim percentage. And with that, because of that, that fight of wanting to see things going back to normal, realizing that percentage was getting smaller and smaller every day, I think that led to some of the frustration that I've been having which puts, takes some of the pressure off our government who's supposed to be helping us out with things. And, and, I, and I guess I've been putting too much pressure on them to give us answers, to give us information, to lead us out of this, and, and putting us on a track to go back to normal. And, I, and because I had this wishful thinking, I was trying to, to make, still wanting to see that happen, still having that positivity, that, that I guess I was still holding on to that. And, and it, I think it dawned on me yesterday as I was thinking about today's show and what I was going to talk about and what, what my frustrations were, was that, that going back to the way things were, at least for the, see, for the foreseeable future, it's just, it's just not going to happen. Oh, can't see the rat coffee. Gotta get that in there. 
get you some rat coffee. Um, I think that's the issue. That's the problem. And I had, I had to... I had to come to terms with that this morning while I was working out that, that, that things, the percentage of going back to the way things were is so slim to none that I just, I have to finally just let that go and start looking at life moving forward of what the new normal is going to be. And also... Let me ask you guys this. This is something that I've been thinking about as well. You know, this is the whole don't tip the apple cart situation. Now, for a lot of us who were who were coming along in the world as the way it was, who built their own businesses, who were taking an active offensive role in life, who enjoyed their jobs, who were having uh, enjoying their academic careers, who enjoyed serving others, who enjoyed building their own businesses. We weren't, it was really hard for us to really empathize what was going on with the, the rest of the world. And when the app, and, when, and if the government's making money and we're making money and we're making progress, we tend to like not want to rock the boat, so to speak. But I have to admit there was a lot of upheaval. There was a lot of people who are incredibly upset with the way things were. And perhaps in living in Los Angeles, I will let you know that the homeless situation has gotten increasingly worse over the years. So maybe, you know, things weren't all that great for, for society as a whole before. And because things were moving so well for a lot of us, we didn't want to tip the apple cart. And, and why should we? Why would we want to tip the apple cart when things were moving so well for us? So considering that the apple cart has been tipped over against our wishes, and we're now letting go of the old normal, moving into the new normal. I think for myself and for the rest of us, we have to figure out what are the important things that are going to bring us a certain amount of joy on our everyday lives as we move forward in what is the new normal for now. And... So here's what I've come up with, at least for me. I have come up with the new normal for me now is just going to be the, the new, the small things. We got to break things down into the simpler things. And here's what I'm looking forward to today. I have been in this apartment and I haven't been able to get out very much. I've taken some opportunities to go read a book in a parking lot to... To, and all the parks are closed here in Los Angeles. They even bowled over the skate park in Venice, Van Skate Park, one of the most iconic places for, for young people uh, in the world. And, and Los Angeles as a whole has been, it's been difficult to navigate. And I live in a studio apartment, as you guys can see. But today, I'm going to the AOC house, um, and I'm going to head out into the backyard, and I'm going to get some sun, and I'm going to read, and I'm going to revel in that sun. And the only reason I haven't been over there is we're supposed to be keeping the social distancing going on. AJ is there with his fiance, and AJ has, has some health issues that make him compromise during this situation. Um, and so I haven't been over there, but uh, I had talked to him yesterday. He's like, yeah, just go on in the back, chill out. You know, I will be in the house working. So I'm going to have an opportunity to get in the sun today, to relax, to lay out in a lawn chair. Some of you 
have been able to have that sort of life. Because I've chose metropolitan living, uh, that has been taken away from me in the last six weeks and has left me uh, working from the home and I haven't been able to get out. So I'm looking for, and I'm gonna work out in the sun today. I'm gonna, to, I'm certainly going to uh, enjoy that. So there is one of the simpler things that we're all going to have to find enjoyment in in our lives now because the old normal is gone, at least for the foreseeable future. And with things being shaken to their core, uh, there's going to be a lot of institutions and a lot of things moving forward that I had been mentioning on this show that were antiquated systems and institutions anyway that needed to go. Scott Adams was putting up his thoughts on a free schooling system over the, that would be online moving forward. And, and I certainly enjoy uh, that idea. So I have let go of any thoughts of returning to the, to the old normal. And listen, if it happens, great. Um, and perhaps we can make it better. But I am now going to simplify things and look at, on a daily basis, the, the smaller things, the, the things that will, of certainly the groups of relationships that I have, I'm going to continue to make those tighter and I'm going to reach out and I'm going to find opportunities to catch the sun. And today's LA's first, I think it's going into the 90s today, at least high 80s, so I'm really going to enjoy that. And here's something else for you guys. If you've, anyone else has been trapped inside, there is what is called solar noon. And this is something I've been reading up on where the solar noon is where the sun is at the highest point and it and is it at that point where it's giving off the, the best vitamin D that you can get in the sun's um, positioning. And so I intend to get the good stuff today. I intend to get the good vitamin D this afternoon. I'm going to tell the other guys that's working there so that everyone else can join me over here in Instagram. So that's where everybody is. I'm, and they're all going to flood in here. I'm sorry, guys. It's just the streaming system's not working. All right, so expect some, some folks coming into our Instagram. Um, so that's it. That's the new normal. That's where we are with things. And, you know, I think everyone uh, needs to be a little bit of an adult about it and realize that we're not going back to the way things were. I think that's what was making everybody a little bit buggy. Certainly, that's why we have been having these protests. People are getting out. People are getting antsy. They want answers. And when you are holding on to the old normal and it's that dream, that optimism is slowly dissipating, it's certainly going to make you frustrating. So I've gotten rid of it. And that's where I am. That's where I'm at. And we're going to have to find a way as a nation to, to move forward knowing that coronavirus is now with us and it's sad um, but there's going there are a lot of compromised people due to their health situation and unfortunately that's where it is we're gonna have to find a way to move back into life slowly safely to the best of our abilities but no matter what we do, it's not going away. There is no vaccine. So that's where that is. All right. So then I got that off my chest. If you guys have any questions, put them in the chat. If you want to pop on and say hello, you can request. I'd be happy to put you on. I know a couple of you guys wanted to request it earlier, but I, I always talk about what's going on, give you guys a little bit of a monologue, and then I invite you all to answer 
to ask some questions and or chat. So we will go there. Well, yeah, sorry guys in the stream today. All right, so here's another one. Let's talk about rat coffee. Uh, why I wanted to talk about rat coffee? Well, they sent me some rat coffee and it is delicious. And I wanted to move into the new normal, which is going to have to start with how I'm going to wake up every day. And how I'm going to wake up every day is I'm going to try to keep it mostly the same. But that routine, even for, God, all this noise, even for us moving forward, is we're going to have to ritualize we're gonna to have to ritualize a new normal. And I think that begins with having a healthy understanding of being the adults in the room, having an idea of what are the simpler things that we are going to need to achieve in order to feel good about ourselves and our place in it. Because the new normal is not going to be as social as it once was. We're not going to have bars. We're not going to have close quartered restaurants. For some of, of you, and, and I know that Georgia and South Carolina is opening back up, that's, we are testing that idea. And because we're testing that idea, it's going to be a touch, it's going to be very touch and go. And with that, um, because it's going to be touch and go, we're still gonna to have to have masks on, we're still gonna to have to be social distancing, and it's going to be difficult to be as social as we once was. For those of you in the, in the medical field, in the psycho psychological field, I know that a lot of you guys follow us, and thank you very much, but we are certainly going to see an uptick in depression, loneliness, and moving forward, that is going to have to be something that we look into and figure out how to deal with. Back to going to the simpler things in life, we're gonna, we're gonna need closed networks of family and friends that we feel safe, that we feel comfortable around, that, that are not compromised, health-wise, and we know that are acting rationally and smart while we get back to whatever the new normal is going to be. And it is going to be through those relationships that we're going to find comfort and we're gonna find some, some connection. Uh, Christy Dell says, already a spike in depression and anxiety. Well, that's <laughs> without a doubt. I mean, here we are. Um, I'm certainly feeling the anxiety and the depression. I was in a mood all weekend. As I said, I think some of that had to do with my hopefulness and moving forward that things would be all right. But as I said, as I said, that slowly dissipates. That slowly starts to fall apart. Um, but with that, having small, closed networks of people that we trust who are not compromised, that we feel safe around. It is going to be, those relationships are going to need, are going to be that much more important to us. We're going to need those people in our lives. We're going to lean on those people heavily because our networks are going to be so much smaller. We're still going to be able to connect as I'm doing with you all right here. But to have that one-on-one -on -one instantaneous connection, reading each other's emotional cues and um, micro expressions, that's how we connect. That is going to be far and few between and our relationships that we have are gonna be that much more important. You know, maybe when we talk about the apple cart and not wanting to dump it over, Perhaps a lot of the relationships that we were building were so superficial that, that a lot of people weren't 
really getting the fulfillment that they that they really needed. Perhaps going back to a closed system, a closed community of tight knit friends and people that you trust, that you feel comfortable around, will allow us to have more fulfilling relationships. As we've gotten more technologically advanced, our relationships have gotten, they had gotten weaker. They had, you know, we didn't really need to put the amount of effort into them as we used to because, well, there's other people who are, we'll see tomorrow doing other things. You know, back 150,000 years ago, back 100,000 years ago, back to 50,000 years ago, our communities were so much more tighter. They meant something. We would fight for each other. As a community, we would grow together. I live in Los Angeles. I know that some of you in smaller towns have better knit relationships with your neighbors, but I can certainly tell you that living in Los Angeles, I know my neighbor across the hall in this building that I lived in for five years. Why? Well, because it's a transient community. People come into this building, people leave this building. I never, I say hello to people on my floor, but I never bothered to hang out with them, get their name. Um, you know, I think I know some of the people's dogs on my floor better than I know the people, <laughs> better than some of the people in the building. You know, I think that's just um, how I am. But, you know, as when you see so many people come and go, what's the point in building those relationships with them? So I think and moving forward, having moving forward and having better relationships in a tighter knit community of people that we trust people that we feel comfortable around. I don't think that is moving into the new normal. That actually sounds quite pleasant. And I think that we all should start thinking about who those people are now and reaching out and bridge and build those connections and relationships so that, so that we can get a little bit more solace in this time. And, you know, and with that, I think that is a wonderful positive place to end this conversation on, which is going to be being able to have a close, a, cl a close knit, tighter community of better bonds, better relationships in which we can forge a new future for ourselves that would be more dependent on each other and our relationships. And we won't be so quick to throw our relationships to the side because we have a disagreement with somebody. We wouldn't be so quick to throw our relationship out the window because somebody didn't have the same views that we did. In fact, we would be a lot more open to new ideas, a lot more open to have a bit of spirited debate with understanding that no matter how we end this, our relationships will be intact. You know, we certainly had become such a fragmented society that, that if, I mean, think about how many people you see on Facebook on a daily basis, deleting or unfollowing people <laughs> saying that they didn't know they had so many offensive people from the other side in their, in their friend circle. I got to tell you, I grew up in a neighborhood where Everyone got together on the weekends for cookouts and no one discussed politics. No one discussed worldviews. Those were the type of things that were kept in your home to yourself. And you voted the way you thought. But you, you, that wasn't out in the open and that wasn't discussed. And that was something that if you brought something like that up at a barbecue, you would be considered rude. So, before I go, does anyone want to say hello? Does anyone want to request to say hi? Does anybody want to ask a question? And if not, I am going to head out. I feel bad for the, the streaming guys. Uh, it just wasn't working out today. 
I'm going to need to get that fixed. You know what? And thank you guys for all the hearts that you gave me today. That is so rad. Charming Buddha. Hello. So let's go through and let's say hello to everyone. And then I got to head out to our other group. And then I am going to get some sun today. All right. Black Lab Furniture Revival. Thank you very much. Thanks for your comments. Tattoos by Jenna. Thank you very much. Jaron Allen. Thank you for popping in. Blood, Sweat, and Silks. I, I hope you're doing well. Let me know how everything is opening back up in South Carolina. Your favorite blockhead will get up to you. Do you recommend any books? I have three books that I always recommend that are self-development startups. I always say, check out Daring Greatly by Brene Brown, The Art of Possibility. The last name of that author is Xander. It's a yellow book. I have to remember that. And then the definitive book of body language. Those are my three favorite self-development books. They handle all three phases. Second cup of coffee. Got up before my alarm. Got a quick workout in. Yes, Jenna. Isn't that amazing? I want to thank Sean Berry for hooking me up with the rat coffee. Sean, I don't know. I, I think I mentioned this a couple days ago that when it comes to coffee, you are, you are, you are putting in the, the adding to my morning ritual and my morning ritual is incredibly important to me. And I believe that everyone's morning ritual is incredibly important to you guys. And so to hook somebody up for their morning ritual, the, the, the one thing that is dependent on how the rest of the day goes, that's a big deal. Finding silver linings, yes, Jenna. The new normal has some silver linings. It is the new relationships that we're gonna build that will be tighter and not so disposable and that will actually mean something to our psychological and social fulfillment. I think that's important. I think we need to get back to that. Others out there, they get scared. Yes, absolutely get scared. <clears throat> I try to remind myself that the normal is the luxury most people never have, and then wonder if it's actually normal. Yes, I have wondered that myself this week. Triangle Life Coach says you love animal. Animal loves you too. Estefan, thank you very much for joining in, buddy. All right. I got to move over to my other Art of Charm group. Already a spike of depression and anxiety. Yes, we talked about that. A huge fan of your podcast. I've been following for a long time. Well, thank you, Charm and Buddha. I really appreciate that. And as always, guys, if you're looking for something to do, you want to sharpen your uh, emotional intelligence, check out the Art of Charm Communication Accelerator. It is all of our best bits from our online training programs, our in-person training programs, and all of the expert guests that we've had over on the Art of Charm for the past 14 plus years. You can find the link to the Communication Accelerator in the link tree and in Instagram, in the Twitter bio, and on our website. Check it out, it's rad, it's super fun. And I believe we have a special quarantine bundle going on right now. So check that out, pick it up, and we can chat about it. Roll through the program, ask your questions. I'd be happy to talk about that and answer them. That's what I'm here for. Thank you guys. Let's have some fun creating the new normal, which is going to be much better, which is going to have much more fulfilling and, and important relationships. I will see you guys tomorrow.